Song of Solomon, chapter 3. By night. That's the period of time we're in. Nighttime. On my bed, I saw him. The bride speaking about the bridegroom. The bride being the church. The bridegroom being Jesus Christ. In this book of Song of Solomon, the bride is Solomon's wife. Solomon, the bridegroom. This is the night is on my bed I sought him, whom my soul loveth. So we're just supposed to be seeking and searching for Jesus Christ. I sought him, but I found him not. And for us in the, in the church age, it's not we found him, we're saved. But he hasn't come yet. And we won't see him until we are absent from the body and present with the Lord or to the rapture. But also we can see him spiritually through his word, through doing right. I will rise now. I'm going to get up. I'm going to do something. I'm going to get off my lazy butt. I'm going to get out of bed. The problem with the church today is still in bed. It's sitting down like a couch potato. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets. Worldly places. She's looking for the bridegroom in the city in the streets. And the broadways. Jesus said broad is the way that leads to destruction. That's not, that's not where the church is supposed to be searching for Jesus Christ. And yet that's the lie of the singing church. We'll bring the world in. Everybody's welcome here. We'll bring in all the worldly entertainment and we're going to find Jesus Christ. I sought him, but I found him not. You're not going to find Jesus in the worldly ways. You're not going to find Jesus in the streets and you're not going to find him in the broad ways. That's the destruction. I'm rich, we're wonderful, we're great, how wonderful are No, you're blind, miserable, bored, naked. And you may have converts that think they're going to heaven and they're going to end up in hell. You think you're doing right in the church, you think you're a Christian, but you're doing it in the city, you're doing it in the streets, you're doing it the broad way, and there is nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. And you're not going to find them. You're going to find the, another Jesus. You're going to find the world. You're going to find the devil. That's what you're going to find. The watchmen that go about the city found me. The people that keep their eye on it, they, they found you. To whom I said, saw ye him who my soul loveth. She, she turned to a worldly man. Said, Have you found Jesus? Where's my Jesus? It goes to a, a man that, that is of the world, a man that is of the devil, a man that's not say, Tell me about Jesus. Become in our pulpit. And Paul tells us those men that are in the pulpit, they're, 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 they're ambassadors of Satan. Jesus Christ tells us they're wolf in sheep's clothing. You don't go to the streets of the city. You don't go to Broadway. And you don't just ask anybody on the street, where, where's, where's my Jesus? That's the lie of the scene church age. It was but a little that I passed from them. I divided myself. I separated myself. I got out of the world. I got away from those people that, that are not saved. I got away from the world and Satan. Separation and division. That's what Paul tells the Corinthian church. Separate. With unbelievers. This is what she does. But a little I passed from them. I separated. I divisioned myself. But I found him whom my soul loveth. Oh, that's when she found him. Christ ain't going to walk with you, Christian, in the world. And Christ ain't going to have fellowship with you while you're in, in the broad ways. You're saved, but Christ ain't going to walk with you. You got a division. You got to separate yourself. You got to come out of the world. You got to come out of the heathen. You got to stand. You got to be a disciple. And a disciple means discipline. Then you'll find Jesus Christ in your life. 
You're not going to find Jesus Christ in Easter and and and, and Christmas and voting. Christ is not in that. You want to look to holidays and all that? You want to look to the servants of holiday? Look at the Jewish feast, because those Jewish feast points us to, to Jesus Christ. Not Christmas. Not Easter. They're pagan. And I would not let him go. Don't let him go. How do you how do you not let go of Jesus? Stay out of the world. Stay out of the sin. Stay out of the devil. Stay out of the broad way. Now, Jesus tells go in the world and preach the gospel. You go out there and you tell them about Jesus, but you don't rank in with them. You don't join in with them. You don't pick up their practices. A lot of the church today, they don't even realize that the Bible says that Jesus Christ is standing outside their door knocking. He's not even indoor. The devil's inside. Jesus is outside. This is a lad to see in church age. I had brought him onto my mother's house into a chamber of her that could conceive me. Intimacy. That's exactly what uh, Isaac, when he met Rebe Rebecca, he brought her into his, I believe it was even Rebecca's place, 10. But he said she comforted him after his mother's death. Scripture was scripture. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, Jewish. We're Gentiles. We're not Jewish. By the rose and by the hinds of the field, dear, that you stir not up nor wake my love till he pleases. That's the second advent. Again, I talked about that last time when we looked in verse 7, chapter 2. Don't wake up Jesus with your, we're going to date the rapture, we're going to date the second advent, you know, because the earthquakes are coming and, 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 you know, the frogs are hopping in the middle of the street. We know the date. Listen, that's what Jehovah Witness has done. That's what many false teachers have done. That's what many false prophets have done. And they've been found to be what they are, false. I am never going to date. And if I ever gave a date of the rapture or the, or the second coming, no, my mind has gone crazy. Or I've been given a drug to, to make me say things I don't believe because I don't know, nor will I know the date of the rapture or the second advent until it happens. So right now, let Jesus sit on the throne, on the right hand of the Father, go in all the world and preach the gospel, the vision, separate myself from the world and try to do right and have Christians battle against me because I want to do right and they don't want to do right. Well, let them go out in the streets. Let them go the broad way because there will be destruction at the judgment seat of Christ. And what I believe is true as a conviction will be gold, silver, and precious stone. And hey, listen. If I am wrong, I've done that which is right and clean. I didn't follow, follow the world's, the ways of the world. And I'll keep on going to the day I die to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. And boom, it, it, listen, if the rapture, listen, the rapture happens, either I die or I'm alive. But the moment the rapture happens, whether I'm living or I'm dead, boom, that's the date of the rapture right there. What is it? I don't know. Second Advent, verse 6. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke? Perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. Matthew chapter 2. That's two of the gifts of the wise men. No mention of gold. Oh, the three wise men, they brought gold, silver, and myrrh, and, myrrh, and frankincense. <laughs> Why don't you teach about two of those gifts that were brought at what Jesus is, the second advent, how he perfumed with that smell. Yeah, he was given myrrh and frankincense as a, about a two-year-old child. But when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to smell of that myrrh. The myrrh is used in death, embalming. Quite a weird gift to be given a two about two year old child. Now you keep on why two years old? Why two years old? Because you don't know nothing about the nativity scene. You don't realize the nativity scene is anti scriptural. Keep on living the way you're doing. Keep on living without studying the Bible, and you'll find yourself at fault. You think that nativity scene is Bible? You'll be a fool before Jesus Christ. 
and your nativity scene as you stand before Jesus Christ at judgment seat of Christ will burn up his wood, hay, and stubble. Hallelujah. Jesus came about September. Uh, where did he get that from? Study, the Bible said. The only the King James Bible says to study. They not be ashamed. A lot of Christians are going to be ashamed. They're in the broadways. In the broadways, Jesus says, the way of destruction. A Christian can be in the broadway. He won't lose his soul, but he'll, learn, he'll lose his works. Franklin says, and all powders of the merchant. So Jesus Christ is going to come back smelling wonderful. As the incense smell, as the oil smell, in the service of the tabernacle in the temple. No one was to make a perfume of the confectionery. Behold his bed. And verses 7 on, we can say, now listen, a type does not go 100%. As I said before, Joseph is the greatest type of Jesus Christ, but Jesus never lied about the cup. Okay? Behold his bed, Solomon, which is Solomon's. Three score of valiant men are about it, of the valiant of Israel. There will be Jews at the second advent with the church because there are Jews that get saved. And I want to put the application to the second advent of the church, but that valiant of Israel, I got to be leaning, I got to back off, and I can't say the, the church at the second advent. Now, if I were to apply the application, we're going to build Israel, we're going to build the Jews. I'm still on, I'm on shaky ground there. I'm not going to go and say this to say to prove this, and I can't prove it. But a slight, but I could be wrong by teaching a slight. They all hold swords. If that is the church, one of our armors is sword, and it's the word of God. There's a sword, the word of God, that comes out of the mouth of Jesus. Being expert in war, war, war that's Joel chapter 2. But I, I said, remember, I'm going to say, this is a sliver that valiant of Israel makes me, but the, it could be not Israel the people, it could be Israel the place. And we are going to Israel one day. Sally, do you, do you want to go and, and, and take, a, uh, take a, a journey to Jerusalem and Israel and walk in the footprints of Jesus? I'm going to walk in the footprints of Jesus at the second advent as he's ahead of me. I'm not going to have a Roman Catholic death. Well, that's where Jesus was. Uh, excuse me. Hey, hey. First of all, your collar's on backwards. Number two, the Hebrew says he died without the city. Oh, this is where the baby Jesus. How do you know that's where the baby Jesus? What biblical proof do you have that that's the spot where baby Jesus, when the Bible doesn't even say anything, but this says Bethlehem. Tradition! Christmas tradition! Easter tradition! And Jesus said, you follow the traditions of men rather than following God in his word. Tradition! It's destroyed the nation of Israel and destroyed the church. This could be the Christians behind Jesus Christ. And if it's valiant of Israel, we're going to Israel. We're going to be where, where Jesus is going to sit on the throne of David and reign. That's Jerusalem. That's Judah. I don't think there are going to be any Christians there that get the inheritance when they're worshiping Jesus Christ. Put Jesus back in Christmas. I don't think you're going to have an inheritance. Because you're not going to get an inheritance in the land of Israel to reign as a king under the king of kings because you worship Rome, Babylon, Assyria, and the other nonsense. And I will name your name if you want to persecute me. Every man has his sword upon his thigh. Not every Christian has a sword upon their thigh. 
I've been in many churches where Christians don't even have a sword. They never get a sword. They don't care about a sword. They always got to go to the to the to the church Bible. I'll tell you back when when we come at the second advent. If this is about the Christian, the the, the bride of Jesus Christ coming, we're all going to have swords. And if you, I, I believe you don't have a sword, you didn't study the word of God. I don't believe you're going to be coming back. I don't know what's going to happen. But I don't believe you're coming back. I don't know what happens to the lazy and good for nothing. You don't lose your soul. But when you got only ashes at the judgment seat of Christ and no crown, wear a frown, wear a frown, because I was a church clown. I wanted VBS. I wanted holidays. Wear a frown. Wear a frown. Because I was a church clown. A great book. If you want to study the book of Solomon. Is The Romance of Ages by Paul Labotz. L-A-B-O-T-Z. A great book and a great study of the book of Song of Solomon. Much better than what I can do. They wear a th they wear the sword upon their thigh because of the fear of the night. Now that's not a Christian. That's the Israels. That's the Jewish people in the time of Solomon. That is not the church age. Now I said you can't apply the church age. Well, no, you can't apply typology 100%. When we come back, it's at the end of the night of the tribulation. There is no light because the sun, moon, and stars have been turned off. But the church age is not going to be afraid of night. We'll have no more fears. So that's the men who have been put in charge, the secret service, if you'll have you, of Solomon, the royal guard. King Solomon, there he is, on earth, made himself a chariot, mobile, of wood of Lebanon. I would assume it's the best of the best. Because that's all Solomon had was the best of the best. He made pillars thereof of silver. Now, you find pillars of marble, stone, concrete. What, I mean, he makes it out of silver. The bottom thereof of gold. The bottom of the, sil the, the columns, the, the, the pillars were, you know, they were silver and the bottoms were gold. And the covering of it was purple. That's an expensive color. An expensive dye. The mist thereof being paved with love. For the daughters of Jerusalem, which is his own daughters, the nation of Israel. Jesus Christ, when he sits as king, he's coming back on a chariot, coming back with a horse for the nation of Israel. And all oh, Jerusalem and all that Jesus Christ will build that temple that Ezekiel tells, all oh, the splendor of that temple, and there'll be no deceit, no foul play. No kicking over tables. No, no blind people. No people leprosy. No, when Jesus Christ comes. No roses will have thorns and there'll be no more weeds and the curse of the earth except the snakes in the millennium. Go forth, O daughters of Zion. That Zion is using the reference to, hey, the, the advent. And behold, King Solomon with a crown. Now here we go. We're not. Now we got to pass away from the Second Advent, but we're talking about the actual, literal Solomon, where his mother crowned him in the day of his epistles. Now you see where the Roman Catholic Church will get that. You see where the Roman Catholic Church will turn to typology. We'll see. There's Solomon. There's Mary crowning Jesus. That means she's got to be. Listen, we're told that even Solomon made a seat for his mother, Bathsheba, next to his seat. 
and the day of the gladness of his heart. So you can't press a type all the way. But the book is about Solomon. And the book is about Solomon's wife. 100%. But there are applications you can put to Christ. And there are applications you can put to the church. And there are applications you can put to the second advent, but you can't put every single word of the book of Solomon to the church and to Christ, the second advent. You can't do that. You'd be doing injustice. And you got to remember again, I say it for the third time, typology does not go 100%. Then you will do injustice. You will not rightly divide the word of truth and you will be ashamed. 